Namaste. Let us begin with our pranams to Sri Ramakrishna. Now we are talking about the stories of he has told, tales and parables of Sri Ramakrishna. Earlier, I had mentioned to you a little about these tales and parables which come in the book Kathamrita in Bengali, spoken by Sri Ramakrishna for the benefit of his disciples, written by Sri Ma Mahendranath Gupta in Bengali, translated into English and many other languages. We are going to take stories out of this. We cannot, of course, discuss all the stories. We will take some stories. For this episode and the following one, we shall talk about a story which is there in this book. You can look at the story if you have the book. You can see the story. Or I will, of course, put it, this is on page 42 of this edition of the book. I will put it in the screen sharing and all of us can look at it together. So part one of the story will be the narration of the tale as Sri Ramakrishna gave it as an example, as a parallel for human life. And part two, the same story, second episode, will be the lesson which Sri Ramakrishna is teaching us. He was teaching spiritual lessons, how to live life so that we get the proper goal. There was a time when spirituality was considered to be something better avoided. But today, in 21st century, we know that spirituality is as important as anything else in our life. So let us talk about developing our English, our language, which we are going to look at by seeing the English translation. Suppose you want to learn it better, you can look at your mother tongue. Your mother tongue also has the same story in a translation of the Kathamrita in your own mother tongue. Look at your mother tongue story if you understand it better. Look at the English translation. See how the translation helps you to enhance your language skills. Because we think in our mother tongue, then we translate into English. So this will be a great benefit for you in learning. Also for each story in the part one, the first episode for each story, I would like to share with you how the stories can form the basis for your enhanced English communication, for your improvement of your English. The second part will be for your improvement of your life your lessons, your values, and your spirituality. So today, let us begin with the first part of the story. I'm not going to read the full story today because the first part tells the story. The second part tells the moral. Sri Ramakrishna is doing that so that it is very clear for all of us. I'm sharing the screen with you so that those of you who do not have the text can easily look at this. The story, as I told you, is in the forest of the world. That is the story. The story begins like this. Once, a man was going through a forest when three robbers fell upon him and robbed him of all his possessions. Now, loud reading, you must remember, is a wonderful way of improving any language, including English. If you want your language to improve, read loudly. But you have to read correctly also. Remember that when we speak, we are breathing out. Periodically, we have to stop, we have to pause, 
and breathe in. Then again, we can speak. Again, we stop. The pause is very, very small. But unless we pause, we cannot continue to speak because we need to breathe. While breathing in, we cannot speak. So where you stop in a language like English, which is a very rhythmic language, there is a rhythm in the language. So we don't say it continuously. We say it with pauses. So where we pause is important. When we teach language, we call it as breath group. Say the words and then you breathe. So I did not read by saying, one sir, pause. Man was, pause. Going through a, pause. Forest when, pause. This is wrong way of reading. Please remember that that is not the way to read because all the pauses which I gave are wrong pauses. They are not the unit of grammar, the unit of structure, which should come in a single breath. So I'll read this first sentence once more. You have to notice where all I'm breaking, which words I'm putting together, so that by reading on and on, you know, this is a big book, more than 300 pages book. Every day, if you read one page loudly with the correct breath groups, you will be able to get wonderful spoken English, wonderful language. You will also get great improvement, excellent values, wonderful spirituality, because Sri Ramakrishna's aim was spirituality. It was not language. We are using it for language because these are wonderful stories and they have all the items of good English which we can practice. So the first point which I mentioned to you is reading loudly. Every day, all of us need to read loudly. Now, while reading, what we should do? We should keep in mind that certain groups come without a pause and the pause comes after the entire group is over. So for the first sentence, I'll show it to you. For the remaining sentences, I'm sure all of you will notice. Today, I'm not going to explain the story or tell you the summary of the story, nothing. I'm leaving you to understand. So when you understand the story, please, you know, at home, write the summary of the story yourself. Everybody asks me these days, how to improve our written skills. Read the story, write it, try to understand it on your own, not with a dictionary, not with a teacher, and write down a summary. Make mistakes, but read the story again and correct your mistakes. Like that, one summary you might have to write 10 or 20 times in order to get it properly. Nobody to correct for you. You don't need external help you should be able to correct it yourself because by practicing more and more, your ability to correct yourself will improve. So let us start again with the first sentence. Once, I paused here. A man was going through a forest, full thing I said without breathing. When three robbers, again I stopped. Forma is there, so not naturally you stop. But after robbers, there's no comma. After once, there's no comma. Still, I stopped because once a man was going through a forest, it's very difficult to read together. When three robbers, I stopped, fell upon him. Again, I stopped because there's a conjunction. In front of the conjunction, we usually stop. And robbed him. Again, I stopped because there's a preposition Usually, if it's a prepositional phrase, which is long, we stop in front of the preposition of all his possessions. So we read this sentence like this. Once, a man was going through a forest when three robbers fell upon him and robbed him of all his possessions. Now, full stop. So long pause. Now, I'm sure all of us can easily understand what is happening here. One of the robbers said, what is the use of keeping this man alive 
question. So saying, he was about to kill him with his sword when the second robber interrupted him, saying, Oh, no, what is the use of killing him? Tie him hand and foot and leave him here. The robbers bound his hands and feet and went away. After a while, the third robber returned and said to the man, Ah, I am sorry. Are you hurt? I will release you from your bonds. After setting the man free, the thief said, Come with me. I will take you to the public highway. After a long time, they reached the road. At this, the man said, Sir, you have been very good to me. Come with me to my house. Oh no, the robber replied, I can't go there. The police will know it. Now this is the story as Sri Ramakrishna narrates it. This is the story he tells. Now the second part of the story is where he tells us the moral of the story. So that will be in the episode two. We will talk about the moral of the story. What is the implication of the story? Today, I'm not telling you the meaning of the story. Next episode, I will begin by summarizing the story as it is told here, and also reading out to you the moral of the story and trying to relate this moral to your everyday experiences. What we experience in our life, can we learn from Sri Ramakrishna's story how to give proper direction to our life? So that will be part two. Today we are in part one. So when you read this story, the first thing that comes, the difficulty that comes whenever we are reading anything is that we have many difficult words you know, vocabulary. So when we read the words, we say, once a man was going through a forest. Now, what is a forest? A forest is a place where there are many trees. The trees are in such profusion that you can't really pass through it. It is dark. There are layers of big trees, small trees, bushes, grass. The place is full. So forest. Then we have robbers, three robbers. Robbers are thieves. You know, we have words like thieves, decoits, etc. These are all synonyms for the word robbers. Look at the spelling. You know, we are not only seeing vocabulary, but we are also looking at the spelling. Look at the punctuation. Once a man was going through a forest, comma, when three robbers fell upon him, and robbed him of all his possessions, full stop. So one part of the sentence, comma, and then another part of the sentence, full stop. So this is how the sentence is divided. These are two punctuation marks, where it is a short pause, where a new part of the sentence is beginning, a new action is beginning, we have put a comma. Where all the action has come to an end, the sentence is complete in all respects, we have put a full stop. Then we have the word robber, which is a noun. And then we come to the same word, robbed. The word robbed is the past tense of the verb, which is made from the noun robber. Robber is the noun. Rob is the verb, R-O-B. But when we make it past tense, we add one more B, doubling. You know, this is a rule of spelling called doubling. So we are adding ed and we are putting an extra b there. So we are na not saying Robert, Robert, but, 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 but is not being said so many times. But pronunciation is the same, Rob, robbed. So we say robbed. Now also when we add s, 
robbers and we add ed the word is robber or the word is rob these are additions when you say robbers you add s it becomes plural that means not one robber but more than one here there are three robbers we have heard so plural of robber robbers many nouns which have plurals are called countable nouns so we have a countable noun here man one is man more than one is men change form not by adding mans we don't say forest one more noun forests then we have robbers robber singular more than one robber then we have possessions possession one something which belongs to you possessions more than one but that means many things which belong to you so by adding s but whenever we add s the pronunciation changes always s or es is not pronounced in the same way now look at robbers z i'm pronouncing not s i'm not saying robbers i'm saying robbers z z why am i saying robbers i'm saying robbers because r is a sound which is a hard sound you know we call them as voice sounds so r ending or n ending is a hard sound so we say we add s and we say s the z we don't say s whereas t is a soft sound look at the word forest so if we make plural we say forests s s i'm saying i'm adding s to forest and saying s so this is how pronunciation is learned for hard sound ending nouns s is pronounced as z and for soft sound pronouncing nouns where the end is soft sound we end with s so z and s these two are important although in spelling it is the same in pronunciation it is different similarly ed robbed b is also a hard sound so we say d robbed now suppose we have a word like a uh, Uh, you know any word which ends with a t or any words with when the uh, ends with a k these are all soft sounds so if you say walk then you add ed you pronounce don't say walked we say walked t t sound ed is written spelling is ed it's very dis, you know distracting because we think it is pronounced as walked it is not pronounced as walked it's pronounced as walked t walked walked k and t together t t goes like that so all soft sound endings they are called voiceless so we pronounce like that whereas b is voiced it's hard sound so we say robbed d d not t but d so you can imagine how many things you can learn just by reading one sentence i showed you one sentence and i showed you how to pronounce how to punctuate and how to find out the nouns now look at the verbs a man was going was going that is you know past continuous te tense fell and robbed simple past tense going verb is to go fell verb is to fall robbed verb is to rob so if we make a list of all the verbs we know you know like sit stand learn teach eat sleep drink uh, you know anything run walk help all these verbs if you hundreds of verbs if you make uh, a list and then write down their past tense then write down sentences with them then we learn good grammar now there were three robbers so now they are speaking to each other 
one of the robbers said, now look at the past tense. Comma is used after the word said, past tense, because the story is a past story. So man was going, robbers fell upon him. They robbed him. So all things are happening in the past. So the robber said also past. But when the robber is saying exact words, we use present because the robber is speaking actually. You have two commas at the top of the line wherever they are speaking. You know, there are some uh, places where all the punctuation hasn't been put while typing, I must have made a mistake. If you look at the story, you will get them correctly. I will tell you where all it is there. So what's the use of keeping this man alive? Question mark. Look at the word what. What is a one way of making a question? There is another question. What is the use of killing him? Again, using what. These are called question words. But all verbs which are helping verbs also can make questions. Are you hurt? Nobody know what is there. What are you hurt? Not there. Are you hurt? Verb comes in front, then subject comes. Suppose we change it into a statement. We say you are hurt. We want to put a question. Put the verb in front of the subject. Are you hurt? Look at the question mark. That is a punctuation mark. Wherever punctuation mark is used, question has to be a question, not a statement. Many times we say that, you know, you are coming. We are raising our voice like a question, but we are saying you are coming, which is a statement. Actually, what should be there? Are you coming? Our verb should come in front. So look at the question patterns here. Look at the inverted commas. They are on top of the line. Two commas when the person speaks and when the person ends speaking. Inside the inverted commas, you will find that present tense is used. Although the story is past, the speaking is present. Now also look contraction. What's the use? Instead of saying what is, we are using a, an apostrophe. That comma at the top of the line is called an apostrophe. Apostrophe shows something which is missing. That is one of the uses of apostrophe. We will come to the other use sometime. I will tell you about that. Today I'm telling you what is. I is missing. Look at the other question. You know, what is the use of killing him? What is the use of killing him? That is the question. But here it is, what's the use of keeping this man alive? So what's is actually contracted form. That can only be used in informal spoken English. We cannot use it in writing. We cannot use it in formal context. If you're going for an interview, don't use short forms. But when you're speaking, you can use short forms. Look at the last sentence. I can't go there. Can't is cannot. Again, informal usage, C-A-N-N-O-T. So N-O is removed, apostrophe is put, can't. This is how it is used. So inverted commas, exclamation mark, oh no. You know? Two times, oh, no, has come in the passage. This shows emotion. This shows, uh, you know, sometimes surprise, sometimes disagreement, sometimes shock. All these things, amazement, we use exclamation mark. So, oh, no, what is the use of killing him? Oh, no, I can't go there. You know, I can't go there. There should be a beginning inverted comma there. I have missed out that inverted comma. Please remember to add that. Then come with me to my house. At the end of house and full stop, there should be inverted comma. Please remember the sentence is always inside the inverted comma. So comma, full stop, all these 
O inside the inverted comma. We never put inverted comma and put full stop after it. These are the common mistakes that are made. So we find that these are all the punctuation marks that are used here. A comma, a full stop, an exclamation mark, a question mark, then you have inverted commas. All these are used here. We also have a colon. You know, look at the sentence. At this, the man said, colon. Instead of comma, a colon is used. Here, comma and colon are doing the same work. Earlier also, after a while, the third robber returned and said to the man, colon, colon is two dots, one on top, one below. When we put colon, what we are doing is, we are expanding, we are showing. So here, instead of putting a comma, if you put colon, you know that the man is going to now speak. He's going to elaborate. He's going to say something. Then we have many words which might be difficult. So look at the words again and again. And then you get the idea of these words. If you read the story many times, you don't have to check the dictionary. You don't have to wait for me to tell you what the meaning is. By reading the story 10 times, you can guess the meaning. That is how we learn new languages. You know, suppose I want to learn Marathi, I should see Marathi television programs for a month or two months. When I keep seeing Marathi programs, after two months, I'll be able to understand Marathi. I have not looked at any Marathi dictionary. I have not looked at anybody who has taught me Marathi. You know, I have not taken help from anybody. I have kept listening and guessing the meaning. So that way you can do it. Today I'm telling you, the robber interrupted. You know, the word interrupted, interrupt means not to allow somebody to say, to stop in the middle. Then interrupted is the past tense. Interrupt is the present tense. Then we have, of course, you know, bound. They, you know, bound is to tie up. So they tied him and they went. Release. Release is to make free, to set free. See the word release, next sentence, setting the man free. So setting free, that is release. These are all synonyms. They are similar meanings. Public highway, a big road. You know, these are all, the rest of the words, I think, seem quite simple. Now, a pronunciation of a word like S-W-O-R-D. The word is pronounced as sod, sod, sod. S-A-W-E-D, that is how it's pronounced. It is not pronounced as sword. It is not swir, swir, that pronunciation is not used here at all. Now, you can see from this story that three robbers are doing something. There is a fourth character also. And then, you know, they are all talking to each other. They are all doing some actions, etc. Very nice drama. You know, you can imagine this whole drama taking place in your mind. Then you can understand, you know, where the robbers are standing, what they are doing, how they are talking. All this, when you understand, language becomes alive. You can also guess what kind of people they are. You know, you can say the first robber is very bad, very cruel. The second robber is not really cruel, but he is not so nice as the third robber. The third robber is nice, but he is still a robber. He is not a good person. This man is a very innocent person. He gets robbed, but still he invites the robber by saying, please come. So you can see how the character of these people is also very clearly available in the story. Their actions, their behavior, their character, all this makes your language come alive. And as I told you, if you have difficulties in learning English, your mother tongue can help you at the basic level. For beginners of English, mother tongue is a great help. You know, we should take the help of the mother tongue. We should use the, we should read our own mother tongue story. The story will be there in the gospel. 
You have to search in the gospel in your own language, gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, Bengali, Kathamrita, in your language, it might be Vachanamrita, it might be some other thing. You read that story there because you are interested in learning the language. Today, in part one of every story, I'm going to talk about the language aspect. Because many of you, after watching those self-improvement videos, have spoken about language. You are interested. So I thought, why to teach language just like that? If we take Sri Ramakrishna's stories to learn language, then we learn also very good attitudes, very good behavior, very good values. Language is improving. And the sentences which we are getting are sentences for our own benefit, not any sentence, you know, which we give single, single sentence while teaching English grammar and so on. So here you can see grammar. Here you can see, you know, all the parts of the speech are there. You have noun, I told you, verb, I told you. Look at the prepositions. Through a forest, through is a preposition. Fell upon him, upon is a pre preposition. Robbed him of all his positions, of is a preposition. These are all prepositions. Preposition is like gum. It joins a noun to a sentence. Then you have conjunction. Conjunction joins two sentences. So it's bigger gum. When is a preposition. And is a preposition. These are all prepositions which are used. So you can see, you know, these are used in the sentence. And when we learn grammar by looking at a story like this, reading the story many times, we don't have to read a grammar book. These sentences become memorized and they become so alive in our mind that after you read 50 to 100 stories, then you don't need anything else. Your English is coming naturally. Your English is coming normally like a baby learns the mother tongue. So please remember these things. Read these stories again and again. Please remember that the stories, when you read these stories, you will be able to get the ability to improve. At this point, I'm stopping to share the story. The story, as I told you, is there in this version of the book, page 42. I did not tell you from the gospel, because in the gospel, you'll have to search. If you have this story, I think PDF version is also available. You can look through the story. You can read the second part of the story also, because we are going to do in the next episode, the second part. And that will not be about English, because I will not comment about English. I will comment about the moral, the value. But the story is still written in English. That part of the story is also written in English. So you can improve your English based on the suggestions which I have given in this part. Compare the two episodes together, put them as a single episode and do. That will be very beneficial for you. And now we are going parallelly, not only self-improvement, but language improvement. On one side, language improvement, on one side, value education. Both if we learn, then we are becoming further and further. It's like double promotion. You know, we are doing so well that we go ahead of others. That is what is required. I hope all of you will benefit from this. Swami Sri Kantanandaji is very keen that a lot of benefit comes to you if you watch Please share with hundreds of others who are going to watch and benefit. My sincere pronouns to revered Swami Sri Kantanandaji Maharaj, because for his desire to have improvement among all youth, he's taking so much trouble. We should all be very grateful to him. And each of us should work hard, whatever we can do, and fulfill his dream to the dream to see everybody progressing, everybody becoming better. Thank you and namaste to all of you till we meet in the next episode.